EA Sports has officially released their top 25 offensive power rankings. And <laughs> man, oh man, you got to take a look at this list. Here it is. You see it. Colorado is at number eight with an 89 overall offense. It's hard to even respect EA Sports when they do stuff like this. Great news. Well, depending how you look at it. I am glad to inform you, if at least you want to be optimistic about this, there's only eight Saturdays left until college football season. Only eight to go, man. And like I said, you can be a Debbie Downer, Negative Nancy, and Eeyore, whatever you want to call it, and say, well, yeah, that's still two months. But to me, eight weeks doesn't sound like anything. With that being said, we are not here to talk about the college football season itself. We're here to talk about the video game and what EA Sports has been doing. Or my apologies, not what they've been doing, but what they've done. We're going to get straight into it. This is the one and only topic we're going to be talking about. And by the way, hope you guys are having a great Saturday. Hope you're having a great weekend. If not, hope this video can make it a little bit better. For starters, first things first, as we all know, and if you haven't been living under a rock, you've heard by now, the college football game NCAA 25, it's coming out in a couple of weeks, which is awesome. We've already talked about that enough. We've been waiting for this game for 10 plus years. I'm not going to cause a big hoopla about the game coming out because, you know, if you're a college football fan, at least to a small extent here you're excited but as we continue to get closer to the release date we've received more information about the game a couple of days ago ea sports released their top 10 toughest places to play not in real life but in the video game and i'm not too sure who made this list i'm going to assume it's the game developers or people associated with ea sports but it's not very good and that's sure coding it because it's quite awful i'm just going to show you it right here as you can see the one thing that sticks out to me the most is Alabama Bryant-Denny Stadium is number two? What? Are you kidding me? There's no way Alabama should be number two. Not only is that blasphemous, but it's straight up comical, laughable, whatever word you want to throw in there. I'd argue and say that Alabama doesn't even deserve to be in the top 10, and I'll explain why. To give you some context and perspective here, I've been to Bryant-Denny Stadium so many times I can't even count. For those of you who don't know, your boy Matt is an Alabama fan. I grew up in the state of Alabama, been watching Bama football ever since I could keep up with it around the age of seven to eight years old. So dating back to 2007, 2008, right when Saban got there. When Saban first got to Alabama, yes. Bryant Denny Stadium, it was a wild place to play. The fans were engaged and it was somewhat of a tough environment. But these past, I don't know, I'd say around roughly, you could say six to eight, nine, ten years, Bryant Denny Stadium isn't even in the top five. Remember, we're not talking about the team itself. We're talking about environment. So yeah, Alabama's been a hard team to play, but the environment, not so much, at least in my humble opinion. And the reason for that is because, and Nick Saban even addressed this years ago, is Alabama fans are entitled and spoiled. I don't mean that in a disrespectful way, but here's the difference with Bama compared to other teams. So Bama fans have just gotten accustomed to beating the crap out of everybody, whether they're the number fifth ranked team in the country or unranked, it doesn't matter. Bama fans expect to win. Therefore, when Alabama's playing number eight Ole Miss, or we'll just say number 11 LSU, something like that, and Alabama scores a touchdown or Alabama's up by seven points or 10 points, Bama fans look at it from the perspective of, oh yeah, well, we should be doing this. They're not going crazy. They're not losing their minds because Alabama fans expect greatness. And when you are used to something, you get accustomed to it, you don't get excited. Let me give you an example here. I'll give you two in basketball and golf. If you play basketball seriously, right? Let's say you average five three-pointers a game. Well, if you hit a couple three-pointers, you're not going to go crazy. Why? Because you're used to hitting three-pointers. Whereas if there's a guy on your team who's made one three in the past two or three years and he hits a three-pointer, he's more likely to go crazy because he's not used to that. You can apply the analogy to any sport. And since I said golf, let's do that one. If you go golfing with your buddies and you're not very good and you don't make a lot of birdies and you don't make a lot of long putts, well, let's say you make a birdie, you make a long putt. Yeah, you're probably going to be more excited than the guy who makes five birdies every 18 holes. I hope I dumbed that down enough for you Alabama fans. They're just used to winning. Therefore, I don't want to say they don't appreciate it. You just kind of expect it. I'd say at best, Bryant Denny should be around, hmm, I don't know, we'll say on a good day, uh, a seven or eight? Getting off the Alabama rant, let's talk about this. Kyle Field, A&M, number one. Uh, how do I say this nicely? 
that's just not very good. That's wrong. I'm just going to come out and say it. It's wrong. The number one team on this list should be LSU. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Death Valley is Death Valley for a reason. Then one time they had like a mini earthquake back in the day with the decibel units. I tell you this much, the fact that Alabama is ahead of LSU, it tells you everything you need to know about these rankings. They don't amount to a hill of beans. Going on down here, you'll notice Ohio State at four. I've never been to Ohio State, so I don't have an experience there, but I'm not, I don't know. Let me know in the comment section, but I'm not too opposed to it. I guess you shall say. Georgia at five, I don't mind that one. Sanford Stadium can get rowdy. At six, we got Penn State. That one kind of shocked me because Penn State, man, they are Penn State. They are notoriously known for having a huge home field advantage. Especially if they got that wideout game. Whew, that's an amazing environment and it's a great time. I think some Penn State fans and even college football fans take it as disrespect that they're not even in the top five and I understand that. I think the one thing that holds Penn State back from being a really tough environment is they can't beat Ohio State or Michigan. And until they beat them, nobody's going to take them serious. At seven, you got Wisconsin. This one is a head scratcher. I've never heard anyone talk about Wisconsin's home build advantage. Like, get out of here, dude. What are we talking about? Wisconsin at seven? No. Not a very good one at eight. We got the Sooners. And yeah, I think that's a pretty good spot. I always love watching Oklahoma football games, and I can't wait for them to join the SEC. It's going to be a great time. At nine, you got the Florida State Seminoles. That's fair. I love their chant. They got the best chant. Not one of them, but the best chance in the game. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's the, oh, 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 you know, don't want to be too corny and cringy here. You get the point. What is the name of that? Somebody inform me in the comment section. Is it like the... Rock chalk or so, I, I don't know what it is. Just let me know. Last but not least, capping off the top 10, we got the Swamp. The Florida one's kind of similar to Penn State since Florida has pretty much become irrelevant these past couple of years. They don't have a real home field advantage. However, I will say the Swamp man is right up there with LSU. The Swamp should easily be in the top three. I'm not going to give you my top 10 because I've told you how I feel about all these, but number one and number two aren't even close. It's LSU and Florida. LSU 1, Florida 2, whoever you want to play after that, whatever. But I'll give you this. The gap between Florida at number 2 and whoever's next, it's a wide margin. I believe we actually have the whole top 25. Hold on. I had it. Oh, here it is. Here it is. At number 12, you got Oregon. 12, you got Clemson. At number 13, this is the one a lot of people are talking about. You got Neyland Stadium. I've been to Neyland Stadium. I was there when Tua put a butt whooping on them, but I can tell you firsthand, it's better than Alabama. Speaking of Alabama, at 14, we got a team in the state of Bama. We got Auburn, Jordan-Hare Stadium. You could say I got SEC bias, but Jordan-Hare Stadium, uh, you know what? I said I got right LSU 1, Florida 2. Well, at number three, I'd put Auburn. If you're an SEC fan, you know. I can't explain it, but there is witchcraft in Jordan-Hare Stadium. And matter of fact, now that I think about it, I low-key forgot about him heading into this video. I might try to convince myself that Jordan-Hare Stadium should be number two ahead of Florida. I repeat, there is witchcraft in Jordan-Hare Stadium and you can't convince me otherwise. Them being at 14, slap in the face, they should easily be in the top five. Everything after that, not too much to say. Some people are bickering about Texas being at 19, but, you know, Texas, they've been irrelevant for a very long time outside of last year. Here's my thing, right? Texas doesn't have an argument for the top three, but they are most certainly or they should most certainly be ranked ahead of Wisconsin. That's my opinion and thoughts on that. Continuing along here, we got to take a look at something else, and that is the rankings EA Sports has came out with for these teams. EA Sports has officially released their top 25 offensive power rankings. And <laughs> man, oh man, you got to take a look at this list. I'm going to tell you straight up before we even get going, where they have Colorado is a flat-out joke. Yet again, these are your offensive rankings. I'm going to show you the team rankings in just a second. Here it is. You see it. Colorado is at number eight with an 89 overall offense. I'm going to say it one more time. Sorry and sucky Colorado has an 89 overall offense, according to EA Sports. You know who that ranks ahead of? Ole Miss. They have an 87 overall. You mean to tell me you think Colorado's offense is better than Ole Miss's offense? What? What are we doing, Bobby? What are we doing? This is ridiculous. They're ranked ahead of Missouri, Clemson, Utah. Eh, Penn State's offense is mid, but they're ranked ahead of Ole Miss. I, I can't get over that. And it's not even the fact they're ranked ahead of these teams. Why do they have an 89 overall offense? 
Did you watch the same Colorado team I watched last year? Granted, I know Colorado fans are going to bring up, well, Matt, we replace all those guys still, dude. Colorado at best this year is winning maybe six or seven games. And that's a maybe. There's a chance in case and scenario they go four and eight again. Who knows? Anybody that knows the game knows Colorado has no business sniffing an 89 overall. And before my Colorado fans get mad at all this like they always do, let me enlighten you on something. Let me give you some insight. Your favorite players on Colorado, I talk to on a regular basis. It's not a hidden secret on this channel. I've stated it multiple times. I have a great relationship with the Sanders family and Travis Hunter. But even they understand, I have to call things for how I see it, and this is just strictly my opinion. There's no need to get offended by any of this. And the reason I bring it up is I want you to understand, if the Sanders family, Travis Hunter, whoever, they don't get offended by me saying, oh yeah, Colorado sucked last year, then neither should you. They're the freaking players. They're playing in the game. That's how I am. I don't sugarcoat anything. If you're my friend, I'm going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. If you lose a football game by 40 points, I'm not the type of guy that comes up to you and says, oh yeah, well, you had a good game. No, you sucked. Let's continue along here though. You got LSU at 89, Ohio State 89, Texas 91, Bama 91, Oregon 94, and Georgia 94. Everything outside of Colorado being at 8, not too mad at. Not mad at Georgia and Oregon being as high as they are, and Ohio State. Maybe some Ohio State fans, I'm just going to assume, they're mad with that 89 overall ranking. But you got to remember, you have a brand new quarterback. Sure, you got a bunch of talent, but as we all know in college football, you're only going as far as your quarterback can take you. Let's take a look at these team rankings, though. I did glance at them, but I can't even remember what they look like. Oh, yeah, about to get mad again. <laughs> you can't make this up. So not only is Colorado's offense an 89 overall, their team has an 87 overall ranking, which means, theoretically speaking, if they have an 89 offense, their defense has to be an 85 overall to meet you in the middle with an 87 overall team. It's laughable, man. Colorado has the same overall as Oklahoma. Make it make sense. Ole Miss is only one point better than Colorado? Get out of here. This is stupid. At best, Colorado should be maybe 75, 76 overall. And those are my guys. Much love to Shiloh, Shadur, Travis, Alden. But come on, man. Y Y'all know I can't rock with this. Don't just get so wrapped up in, hey, they got Shiloh. Hey, they got Shadur. Hey, they got Travis and a couple other notable players. Yes, Colorado has as many notable players as your Bamas and Ohio States and Georgias of the world. But in the trenches, they can't even compete. It doesn't even come close. Gosh, man, I just can't get over that. That's so bad and it's so disrespectful to the game. Overall, for the team rankings, Georgia's still number one with a 95, but Ohio State's right there with a 93. As I'm glancing at these, yeah, I'm pretty much A-OK -okay with everything else. As long as it's something reasonable and close, I'm not going to get too upset. But Colorado, 87 overall team, which includes the defense, who was easily the worst defense in the nation last year? Come on, man, what are we doing? I'm starting to believe the more I look at this, they won't match to be the bad guy. They want me to come out and say this stuff. And I'll tell you what this is, the reason they have Colorado so high as an overall offense and team is because of the media. I've been busy these past couple of days with life and just making other videos. Maybe more people are talking about this, but the fact I haven't seen anybody bring up Colorado being this high, kind of ridiculous. Some people may say, well, Matt, it's not too big of a deal. It's a video game. And yeah, I'd agree to a certain extent, but if you're going to make a video game, make it right. Now, if they were to go out here and, let's just say, theoretically speaking, they finish a year 8-4, and 9-3, and, and they earn a high ranking, I have no problem with that whatsoever. But my question is, to the devs, I guess you'd say, what are you basing this 87 overall off of? You can't be basing off of last year. They sucked. The only argument you have is, well, yeah, all those players they had last year left and they're bringing in new guys, but here's my rebuttal. You don't know if those new guys are going to be any good. There's just no way, no matter how you chop it up, you can justify Colorado being this high. And it's not the fact they're an 87 overall. It's the fact that they shouldn't even be in the upper 70s. It's hard to even respect EA Sports when they do stuff like this. That's my two cents on the situation. There's many more things I could say, but we'll end it off here. Let me know your thoughts down below. But